Let's talk about hate. After we published our video on the Arch Enemy copyright issue, and my article was picked up to run on Petapixel, one of the largest photography magazines in the world, everything went kind of crazy for a bit. Before long, and for reasons that I still don't quite understand, we ended up on the front page of Reddit, and went from being a rather obscure publication to being at the center of something huge. And yet, despite the enormous support that we got, what I really want to talk about is hate. Because that's also part of what this situation created. Hatred against us, hatred against Arch Enemy, and of course, hatred against Thunderbolt clothing. Arch Enemy's sponsor. Now, by making this video, I don't want to relitigate my own argument with Arch Enemy and their management. Although it is true that they have made a number of mistakes in their handling of this whole situation, including but not limited to accusing me of extortion, of being a troll, of lying, of slander, of fake news, of unleashing an army of bullies against them, and hinting that I had misogynistic motives behind my article, I don't think there's any point. My position has been made abundantly clear, both in my article as well as on our Facebook page, plus I doubt we will ever see an actual apology or mea culpa on their end, so let's just move on from that. To be honest, I've been very fortunate, because my story resonated with a lot of people, and so the vast majority of the messages that, were, that we received were extremely supportive. And yet even then, despite this level of support, I received a lot of insults and threats. From just normal insults dealing with my beard, all the way to really hateful and racist comments, straight up death threats, and comments urging me to commit suicide. By the way, asking someone to commit suicide is the laziest way of threatening someone's life. It's like you want them dead, but you don't really want to put in the effort. Because of the overwhelming support that we received, I knew that if I was getting this kind of crap, the people at the other side were probably getting much, much more. It was during the chaos of the first couple of days after publication that I first heard back from Marta Gabriel, the person behind Thunderbolt Clothing. Together with apologizing for the problem and letting me know that she wanted to make amends and actually make the donation to the Dutch Cancer Society that I had requested as payment for the use of my photo, she told me about the absolutely disgusting treatment that she was getting from people on social media. For lack of a better word, People were terrorizing her, they were sending her extremely horrific messages, disgusting racist and misogynistic insults, and of course plenty of threats. People were telling her crazy and even illogical things, like calling her a communist and a Nazi, or arguing that this whole thing with my photo was the result of her hating people with cancer. The store's online presence was also being targeted, with people leaving false reviews or falsely flagging all her images as copyright infringing. It was a true frenzy of hatred that really took me by surprise, and which actually made her close her store, well, at least temporarily. I know that some might think that I am being dishonest, but I never would have thought that I would have to tell people not to harass someone because of an IP dispute. By this, I don't mean that I didn't think that people would be bothered by what happened. I mean, obviously, I was bothered by it, and that's why I thought it was so important to tell the story. What I'm saying is that I never thought that people would react to this situation with this much anger. And while I have heard plenty of people say that if Arch Enemy's management had acted differently, then none of this would have happened, the fact of the matter is that none of the things that their management did as incompetent and even offensive as they might have been, justify harassing or threatening anyone. I know that when you haven't been at the center of something like this, it's really difficult to imagine how bad it can actually get. I mean, it's just Facebook or Twitter or, or Instagram, so just close the app and let it blow over on its own, right? Well, it's actually very difficult to do this because in reality, we're a very interconnected society and so actually removing yourself from all social media or never checking your phone is actually pretty difficult, especially if you're trying to run a business. Plus, some people are really shit and they will try to also get into your personal life. You don't know who I am, but I know where you live. I know this because some of the messages that I've received have included rather personal information, so I can only assume that this situation was even worse for Marta, who took quite a bit of the abuse from people who should honestly know better. In his classic book 1984, George Orwell spoke about the two minutes hate, a daily activity in which the citizens of Oceania must focus their anger and express their hatred for their common enemy. As Winston Smith, the book's protagonist, explained, The horrible thing about the two minutes hate was not that one was obliged to act a part, but that it was impossible to avoid joining in. Within 30 seconds, any pretense was always unnecessary. A hideous ecstasy of fear and vindictiveness, a desire to kill, to torture, to smash faces in with a sledgehammer seemed to flow through the whole group of people like an electric current, turning one even against one's will into a grimacing, screaming lunatic. And yet, the rage that one felt was an abstract, undirected emotion which could be switched from one object to another, like the flame of a blow lamp. This is very similar to what happens in social media. People find themselves taking part in what amounts to be a virtual pillaring of whoever happens to be that day's enemy of choice. People are reduced to a single characteristic, deprived of all of the nuances of their humanities, 
and publicly destroyed. As part of this public shaming, they are transformed into all or nothing characters who can either be deserving of absolute praise or of absolute hatred. In his amazing book, So You've Been Publicly Shamed, John Ronson analyzes the reasons why people from all around the world, at any given point, decide to basically end the lives of individuals who, at worst, have only made a mistake. In a talk that Ronson gave about the book, he said, Maybe there's two types of people in the world. Those people who favor humans over ideology, and those people who favor ideology over humans. I favor humans over ideology, but right now the ideologues are winning, and they're creating a stage for constant artificial high dramas where everybody's either a magnificent hero or a sickening villain, even though we know that's not true about our fellow humans. What's true is that we are clever and stupid. What's true is that we're gray areas. The great thing about social media was how it gave a voice to voiceless people, but we're now creating a surveillance society where the smartest way to survive is to go back to being voiceless. What he argues is that this culture of publicly shaming people on social media, this kind of online harassment, creates the risk of making people afraid of speaking up. They become silent, afraid that sharing their innermost thoughts could have them attacked by others, or afraid that if they share a simple complaint about someone else, the social media response will be absolutely disproportionate. The fact is that Marta, through her company, made a mistake. Everybody makes mistakes and everybody should be allowed to learn from them and to move on. She does not deserve the kind of treatment that she has received and I really hope that she will be able to continue with her business. You can be mad about things. You can and should make yourself heard. Your voice is by far the most important tool in your arsenal against injustice. But it is essential that when you exercise your ability to express yourself, you don't become exactly what you hate. A bully. Now before we go, I really want to thank the almost half a million people who have watched our previous video and the almost three quarters of a million who have read my article. It's a really incredibly powerful and overwhelming experience to know that so many people felt interested and connected with a story like that. It was especially touching to get messages from photographers who have experienced similar situations, either with Arch Enemy or with other bands, and who very kindly share their stories with me. I can only hope that we can really live up to their trust and their kindness.